You're listening to Sports Radio Detroit. Welcome into another episode of SRD Ringside, the April edition here on SportsRadioDetroit.com. I am the humble, throwing it up, the, the assist man. I'm the John Stockton to your Carl Malone. I'm Roger Castillo, Killer Brad here. I got Ray Vipon and special guest. And a guy who knows his boxing pretty well, and he will drop his knowledge on you, and then you come out, he'll come out of nowhere because Pete Spivak, who does a show on the network, the Whip and Nene podcast, the more I find about Pete, the more I'm fascinated with, first and foremost, knows a lot about horse racing. Second, knows video game, like his old vintage video game history <laughs> is uncanny, Pete. Like, I, I honestly, like, he, he fixes or repairs stuff on the side. It's impressive. And third and foremost, too, um, Really, if you get him into any type of historical aspect, Pete can drop some knowledge on you. So, uh, Pete, welcome in. Thanks. Um, Great to be on. here. Thank and, you so uh, much. So much going on in the month of April. And, uh, Ray, take it away. All right. Well, as we know, we got a big one for a local fighter who is on the national level with Clarissa Shields finally showing down with Christina Hammer. We are going to bookmark that for the end of the show, though, because Pete is specifically here to talk about that fight, which actually, Pete, is where I met you. Uh, covering the fight at the casino, the MGM Grand, the first when one. she Her fought first Nikki one. Adler, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So no, Nick- yeah, there was a second one then. Right. Oh, no, I, no, no. You're right. Yep. Yeah, that was the second one. Yeah, so Pete and I met each other covering the fights there, and he's a real local boxing enthusiast. Brad, as always, welcome here to do the, uh, so the local great. side of things. Uh, we just introduced uh, Brad to Pete, and I made the joke that uh, Brad, I was the... You know, Brad's the second best boxer in the room, to which Pete replied, thank God you recognize me as number one. So <laughs> somehow I immediately got bumped to third. But wait, no, we have a problem, though, because Roger wasn't in the room when that happened. So, Roger, am I now fourth? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. You know, Brad, Brad can attest, though, we box out of the same gym. Brad can oh, attest yeah. if you go ask anybody about the five or six years when I box as an amateur, and if they say, you say something like, hey, uh, Ray used to box here. Was he pretty good? Am I wrong, Brad? There'll be a pause. I'll go, oh, he was tough. No, no, no. I mean, like, was he, like, a good fighter? Did he, like, win a lot no, of fights? he had a lot of heart. Ah, uh, he's tough, though. He had a lot of heart, man. That guy could take a... No, no, I'm not asking if he could take a punch. I'm saying, really could he well. win? Could he box? No, just listen to what I'm telling you. The guy was tough, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess fourth is probably my proper ranking. But you're not knocking me out, Pete. You're going to beat me on the cards, but you ain't knocking me out, buddy. Get you by I'm decision. T- but, yeah, you're, going, you're only getting me by the judges. Uh, you're not sparking a me. A little, little lo- uh, local historical fact here. Yeah. Ray Vipond and I actually fought on a few smoker shows yep. against each other with about 15, 20 pounds weight difference. Yeah. And, and I don't think either one of us was in a shape to knock out anything. No. Nope. I don't know nope. those nights. <laughs> no. Nope. You know what? You know it's bad when we were hiding from each other, trying to have a cigarette in the parking lot, oh, trying to act like horrible. like no one could smell us, right? Like people don't know we're smokers. Get the, like how stupid are we? Man, no one, no one can smell us on my body. I'm I'm totally fine. That was your spider spider Rico moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it bad if you're trying to fit the the cigarette between your hand wraps and you can't quite get it between your fingers because your hands are taped up? That's stupid. It, it was rough. It was bad. Uh, so I'm gonna burn through the national stuff real quick because obviously we have way more stuff to talk about locally. Uh, recapping March real quick, uh, Brad, you know, I had a really bad November and December and I was no. picking fights as if I was throwing darts on a wall. You were drunk. I was drunk New the year. whole time and I finished off up. the Jameson. I've been dry since January 20th, by oh, the way. No. I, yeah, no. that ends next Saturday, by the way. No. I have a half marathon <laughs> next Saturday and I haven't. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, the cool thing is, is two beers, and I'm solid because I've I've been dry for like three months, four months. So I'm I want to be. Uh, I want better witnesses. It'll this. save you money. Yeah, I'll be a very cheap date next Saturday <laughs> night. Um, so that now that I sobered up and started picking uh, fights like an adult, uh, February went really well with 83 percent. March, Brad, I went 20 for 23 in March, oh baby, 87 percent so, rate. So I, I knocked March out pretty well. Um, the bookies will be kicking down your door. I know. I told them, once those casinos get those damn sports books put in finally, please come see me for your boxing tips. These will be off the record and not connected to Sports Radio Detroit because if I'm wrong, that's too bad for you. But I'll give you the best <laughs> advice I can give you. Try to give you some insight, Scoop. Uh, the two biggest uh, news uh, points on the national level from March was uh, Mikey Garcia, uh, Errol Spence. I think that pretty much went the way most people. I know some people were picking Mikey Garcia, but I think majority of the decision on that was that Mikey was going up too big in weight. And everything Mikey can do, Errol can do. So if you're a, a great small man versus a great big man, the great big man will always win. There wasn't really a category that Mikey could dominate Errol in skill set wise. And that fight kind of went how it went. 
Um, I think even towards the end of the fight, Mikey definitely kind of pulled off a little bit, seeing that the yeah. knockout wasn't going to happen, so why go in there and get hurt? It was a clinic. Sure, but I give him credit for doing what he did. I'm not going to disparage the guy for trying to make the jump. There's a lot more money in that d- division as well, so it all makes sense, but I'd like to see Mikey go back down. you got Vesel Lomachenko. You can fight Robert Easter. There's a couple big names in those lower weight classes. You don't have to be up at Welter. He got the paycheck. He took a crack at it, but that was kind of what I thought most people would expect. Uh, and then Lamont Peterson retired uh, after his loss to Sergey Lipinets. Yeah. What a great career out of that guy. And if you remember, what's interesting to me is if you go back to like 08-ish, 09, it was actually Anthony that everybody had put their pin in as like the brother yeah. who was of the Peterson brothers who was really going to make it. He had a higher knockout percentage. He was a little more of a forward fighter who, who made fights a little more exciting. But, you know, he had that big issue with the Brandon Rios fight where he went low a bunch of times and yeah. things got nasty. And then he just kind of stayed fighting B-level opposition. You know, Anthony's never really cracked back up into the top 10 again. And then Lamont was, was the one who sort of rose out of the two of them. Um, and what a great career he had. I think he's calling it at the right time. You know, a yeah, guy like Lipinets is a dude he probably could have beat four, three, four, five years ago. So to take the loss, he looked real bad. His face looked physically bad. He was extremely lumpy and swollen up in that fight. So for him to understand at that point, you know, what's done is done. My, my run here is over. He's in a weight class with a bunch of killers. That's not an easy weight class to make a living in. So kudos to uh, Lamont Peterson really making a lot out of his career. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people know the story about they, were, they used to live in a car, and they were yeah. homeless for a long time in D.C., coming out of a real, real tough neighborhood. And, you know, Barry Hunter – uh, ran most of their career raised for them and, and raised them basically, yeah, as, as like a like a father sorts a father figure. So great for him and good to see him going out. Uh, let's hit these uh, April bouts real quick. April twelfth, next Friday uh, from LA ESPN Plus. You got a title fight with Vasil Lomachenko versus Anthony Krola. Uh, this is like a no doubter at this point. Uh, yes, he's looking so for who? fights. Lomachenko's kind of running out of people right now as as the shuffle kind of figures out who's going to be who. As I mentioned with the earlier fight with Garcia, if Garcia comes back down, that's a great fight. If Robert Easter wins his his fight this month that's a fight he could make but Lomachenko as I've said on the last three bouts he said is to me has no peer at that up to 140 I would almost say I don't think Lomachenko has a relevant opponent who's in the top five that could fight him now that can beat him I think he's that damn good I am damn close to putting him as an all-time great already no Tank Davis no I don't think I don't think Tank can beat him I think Tank can out aggress him, but but Vasil to me still has that thing that no one has, where he can fight defensively, offensively. Absolutely. He is never doing one or the other; he's always doing both. Yep. And I don't think that, even though I think the Tank has a better offensive skill set and is clearly a more aggressive fighter, I don't think that's going to work to his advantage because those angles that Vasil can make while still counterpunching you on the way out. You know, the, when he fought Linares, who was a guy who was supposed to kind of be the one to settle him to more into a yes. boxing match. And it didn't happen. He clowned him. I mean, even with the knockdown, I don't really care about that as much. Sure. You know, with a bad shoulder even, the footwork and the ability to be in the place he always yeah. needs to be and be out of your punching range, I don't think that Davis has that answer. The angles and the physics uh, sure. that Tinkle brings is, is just so super hard. And I don't, I don't think Tank Davis has defense to stop those punches that are going to be coming at him. What do you think his limit is, though? Are, are you a Davis backer? No. Like, what are your I, thoughts I, on him? I, I don't really like Davis. Um so much. I, I think he, he's had some talent, but now there's been stalls and everything, and it's waiting on this guy to fight and just get moved in to fight some credible people or to do what he's going to do. Uh, and I think he's being shelved right now. I don't know why. What are your thoughts on that? He's well, it's like this once, twice right. a year nonsense yeah. for a guy who should be running through people right. and getting exactly. this numbers up. Exactly. I don't know. And so where we, would we see these fights, a fight with him and Lomachenko even the next 24 months? How? I right. doubt it. I mean, unless it's, uh, you know, unless there's something that just needs to be made and the, and, and the money's right. But then, honestly, I, to your point, I think you're throwing away Tank Davis's career at that point because, he, to, in my opinion, he'll get clowned. Uncle Al mad at him? Maybe? I don't know. Ah, <laughs> could be that. And, uh, you know, Floyd's, was, Floyd's pissed at him? I don't understand. It was a Floyd thing, right, a few months ago? Yeah, yeah. They had a little thing, but I thought that was over and he was going to get his life going. I thought so, too. Sure. Yeah. Maybe he needs to stop hanging out with Adrian Broder and stop getting in trouble jesus tank damn it right anyway nothing no nothing positive has ever come out with hung hanging out with adrian broner no, just ask adrian broner yeah he, uh, doesn't, he doesn't want to hang by out. the way his last arrest fun fact i've been keeping track i don't know why uh his last arrest now puts him in the past three years he has more arrests than wins oh wow he has been arrested more serious? times than w's in the ring wow. yeah absolutely that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's better at that. He's better at getting arrested than he is at winning boxing matches. That's the definition yeah. of a badass. He's great about telling you how he's going to win a boxing match. He's going yeah. to inevitably lose. But, yeah, he now has more wins than arrests. So you, you, you super don't want that ratio to be that way. That's bad news. 
Uh, so obviously in that fight, I'm going to take Loma by UD, though. I don't think he's going to knock out Anthony Krola. Anthony Krola is a solid fighter, don't get me wrong, but we're talking about an a, like a, maybe an A-minus level to a straight A+. Plus. Yeah. He's not going to be able to bridge that gap, but enough that, I, you know, v- Vasil isn't a knockout fighter no, at all. He at all. gets knockouts on volume and by getting you yeah. worn out and, and you, you have enough of being hit 480 times. But <laughs> uh, but I think Krola can hang in there. Uh, the next night will be April 13th, obviously, is the Showtime card with Shields Hammer. Again, pinning that. We'll come back to that later. Uh, there's a couple local fighters on the undercard of that bout. We won't talk too much about it, but we'll mention them. Uh, same night on April 13th, though, on the DAZN Network, you have a title fight with Jaime Mungaya versus Dennis Hogan. I have been a Jaime Mungaya cheerleader for quite a long time. I think he's a very fun, powerful power puncher he has the ceiling of a power puncher but that's great there's nothing wrong with that he's going to end up he's he's saying this is his last fight at 154 and he's going to jump to 60 and then now he's going to get in with some killers you know Dervianchenko uh Danny Jacobs Canelo Triple G you've got some problems at one cell uh, Jamal Charlo yeah. so he's definitely jumping into a big f- shark pond if you will but that's fun because he's got the firepower. He doesn't have any defense really at all, and that's really what, where someone's going to outbox him and out and, and beat him because they're going. You know, a guy like Triple G and a guy like Canelo can make that power miss, and they're going to hit him more than he can hit them. But he's going to have fun doing it in the meantime. So, and I'm I'm excited to watch that power. You know me, Brad Kelly Pavlik, fighters like that are the guys oh, yeah. I fall in love with. I love power punchers who can't can't have any defense. It's like a mirror of me, you know, like. <laughs> So, oh, uh, happy birthday, by the way, to Kelly Pavlik, the ghost. Uh, is it his birthday today? Yesterday, yesterday. yesterday was okay, his yeah. Youngstown, Ohio's uh, uh, one of their one of their best fighters, along alongside Ray Boom Boom. Man yeah, yeah. Man. But uh, happy birthday to Pavlik. You know the side note very very quickly. The biggest thing I loved about Pavlik is it's great that you knocked out Jermaine Taylor, but I love that he came back and outpointed. You know what I mean? Like, so he didn't just win on his power skill set alone. He showed that he could kind of box uh, until Hopkins, and then he found out that he can't. No. Um, but he had a good career, though. It kind of ended poorly with uh, his out-of-the-ring issues. But uh, I still always will always have a soft spot for Kelly Pavlik. Uh, so Dennis Hogan is uh, the one fighting for Mungaya's WBO junior middleweight title. I don't think he's got any real chance in this fight. I think Mungaya will get him in the middle of the fight. Mid-round's TKO. Uh, but I do look uh, excitedly for Mungaya to jump to 160. And then that same night on Fox Sports 1, so you have three separate cards on April 13th with Showtime to Zone and FS1. Because, you know, Pete, boxing's dead, right? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Just like horse racing. Yeah, just, yeah, it's all dead. Uh, I, I just posted a thing on Facebook that I did the math on uh, Canelo's DAZN contract, his five-year contract. He makes $217,000 a day. Yeah. You, you know, boxing's dead. There's no, yeah, there, there's right. no <laughs> sport that's dead that could pay somebody <laughs> right. that, that right, kind right, of contract. Right, right, right. And ESPN, who is, not, who is laid off high double digits of employees, just spent $50 million with a deal with Top Rank Boxing to show it on ESPN on their ESPN Plus platform. So a company who's laying off people is still willing to spend fifty million dollars in the in the game of boxing. So please, we're not we're we're done with that conversation. Uh, so that card, April thirteenth on FS One, is Cable, Caleb Truex versus Peter Kean. Uh, it's twelve round bout for the IBF Super Middleweight Eliminator. Brad, I think this is going to be a snoozer. I do too. I don't I think there's anything exciting about this fight, but no. it's a title fight, so we have to talk oh, about it. I am going to take Kean by unanimous decision, and I had a hard time with it. Um, I don't think Truex is that good either. I mean, I feel like I'm picking between two B level. I'm picking between two X's, one who cheated on me and one who stabbed me. Oh. Um, and both <laughs> both were not enjoyable experiences. <laughs> By the way, I had the largest coffee before I left today, so I'm a little. So did I. I just, yeah. Oh, good. I'm hopped up too. <laughs> I am fired up right <laughs> now. And vibrated. I'm still mad at that lady at Eastern Market for. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take Kean though, Brad. Do you agree or disagree? You think Truex can win this fight? I, no, I, I, no? I, no, I do think he you can. You do? I do think okay. he can. I, I, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be a yeah. snooze fest. But um, I, I think it's going the other way. I think Truex is going to step his game up a little bit. Sure. Maybe. I don't know. I okay. haven't really followed it too much. But um, my first instinct is to roll with but I think yeah. if you could think about Kean long enough, you'd switch. And then if you thought about Truex long enough, you'd switch. Again. You know what I mean? Like that's it's hard exactly to what it is, stick a know? pin into so it and it, really it, commit it to is. it. That's a, that's a pick 'em. Is it ironic, by the way, that I just had that spiel about how boxing isn't dead and it's the greatest thing in the world right now, and I immediately transition into the shittiest fight of the month that's with happened. Truex and Kean? <laughs> <laughs> that timing's terrible. <laughs> like boxing isn't dead, but you could probably skip this one. Yeah. It's not that yeah. great. Well, you know, that's good, though. Hey, to, to say that, you know, we've got enough to talk about where we can actually say that some of these fights are, man, you know, we're just yeah. mentioning them and they're shit. Hey, sure. You watch it if you want to. But, sure. You know, there's, and you there's have two other great cards that night to deal exactly. with if you don't want to go to FS1 and yeah. their super long commercial breaks. Oh, I hate it. I know. Um, and opening that card uh, 
uh, will be uh, Sergey Jervinchenko, previously mentioned, Jervinchenko versus Jack Kolke. This is a 12-round IBF middleweight eliminator. Don't expect a whole lot out of that fight either. I think Jervinchenko wins by a pretty easy UD. I don't know how much he can get himself into that. Middleweight is crowded, yes. and I don't. he doesn't have the name to force himself into something, which is unfortunate because he's a very good fighter, and he's been doing what he can do to get himself into the picture. But being an unknown in a division with that many superstars who have been on big, big pay-per-view fights, to have their name on Sports Center, I, I feel it's tough for him to get himself a place at the table. But he's a good fighter. There's nothing wrong with him. He's yeah. just unknown enough at coming out of Eastern Europe and Russia and coming over here and trying to kind of jam himself into the picture. It's, it's going to be an uphill battle for him. He's always going to be the B-side, and he's always going to have to take you know way less pay uh, yeah. compared to who his counterparts are because he's not going to come in as the A until he, he actually beats somebody with a yeah, belt. Sure. And actually, he's a guy with even with a belt, he might not be the A. Yeah. So anyway... Uh, moving to April 20th, you have the pay-per-view uh, with Terrence Crawford and Amir Khan. Uh, opening that bout, you got Teofimo Lopez versus Edis Tatley. I am the biggest Teofimo Lopez yeah. fan. I love this guy. He fights the way you should fight. I wasn't mad about the Magnolano fight where he did the shovel barium thing. I know a lot of people blew up on Twitter about how unsportsmanlike like that was. Whatever, dude. It probably wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but exciting is exciting. It's the same way I felt about end zone celebrations. If you don't like it, stop it. Right. So... I mean, whatever it is, it is. Uh, he didn't do it with any kind of, like, you know... Malicious intent. Right, yeah. It wasn't malicious intent. He was just doing what he was doing. Uh, but Teofimo Lopez is a spectacular prospect. He's a very, very exciting fighter. Um, I got him by a mid-rounds TKO. Second on that card that I want to look to is Shakur Stevenson fighting Christopher Diaz. This is really the first big test for uh, Stevenson. He's been kind of running through opponents yeah. as they're moving him up the ladder you know, really rapidly. Um, unfortunately, this is coming off a pretty bad incident that came out last week where the video surfaced that there was a brawl in that parking lot garage where Shakur Stevenson appeared to hit not only a female but a man who was down. Wow. Uh, it looked pretty messy. The, that's all still being sorted out. While I don't particularly care about that in the sense that I don't really discuss a lot of outside of the ring personal behaviors. I do think it's a problem for the fight, though, because that's the kind of thing that can really distract you in yeah. camp, particularly in a fight where you think you might be maybe already the uh, having the advantage, and that's an opponent you're not supposed to really respect. Now you have this stuff on the side. So hopefully that's a thing that he can deal with separately and get through. That's a bad look, though. God, it's a bad look, and you don't want this this early in your career. Uh, do it late in your career like Floyd did. Anyway, um, so the main event of that card, Terrence Crawford, Amir Khan. Amir Khan is is such a great career, but it's not going to end well here. He's no. done fine for himself, and he's very flashy and very fun to watch. But his chin is terrible. Good night, Khan. Yeah, and his chin's obviously very questionable. And against Crawford, man, Crawford is one. The only guy who I think can beat Crawford is Errol Spence. I mean, he, yeah. I don't, I, he's like Lomachenko, where he's really short on peers as well, the people who I think can actually beat him. Um, so I think Crawford is going to handle Khan pretty easily in this fight. I think Khan can kind of disrupt him early with the hand speed, and I think it'll take Crawford three or four rounds to adjust to that. I don't think Crawford's seen anybody this fast, though. Brad, no. do you counter that? Uh, no, I agree. I don't think that this is going to be a test for Crawford as well to see how he can handle speed. You know, Right. So let's give Crawford probably three, four-ish rounds to adjust to that flashiness and how I think Connor's going to come out quick. He tried it with Canelo. You know, he knew yeah. I need to get you now and I need to disrupt you early. Um, and then Canelo ended up catching him. I kind of expect the same from Crawford. I think oh, Crawford I will see it early for you know, three or four rounds of blaze and then, okay, make his adjustments. He's that good of a fighter. Well, he will make yeah, those Conor's adjustments. going to walk into something absolutely crazy somewhere yep. in the middle, middle rounds of the fight or towards sure. the end. And, and that's, it's scary. I, I don't, I saw uh, who, who's with Con. Is it Freddie Roach still? Did, does he have a, no, I don't I think I he's think with, so. and you know, yeah. When you, when you say that, if Freddie's not in his corner, Freddie's smart. He knows, you know, he knows sure. better or whatever. I know they had a history before and everything like that, but, um, I don't see a good outcome for Khan in this at all. No, no. And it's it's one of those things where I think Khan could also serve well to maybe drop down another weight class and go back to 40. Yeah. Possibly. You know what I mean? So, high. I mean, so crazy to me. you know, he's I mean, he's fought up to 154, you know, so sure. he's been everywhere. And I, I, I always wanted to like him, but then he takes these fights where I'm like, God, I don't think he can get out of this one. Yeah. And then he usually can't. Yeah. Um, on the same night, uh, non-pay-per-view on regular Fox, uh, that'll be Danny Garcia and Adrian Granados headlining that. Um, opening that card, Brandon Figueroa uh, versus Parejo. That's a 12-round bout for a WBA, the, excuse me, the interim junior featherweight title. Uh, I got Figueroa. Brandon Figueroa is a great fighter to yeah. watch. Uh, Figueroa is going to win by a late-round TKO I got in that fight. Andy Ruiz Jr. versus Alexander Dimitrenko in a 10-round heavyweight bout. 
you know, I got to figure that Ruiz is kind of in that same situation that I was talking about uh, with the middleweight division where he needs to get himself a place at the table, and it's a very, very full building. Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, Jarrell Miller, Luis Ortiz. So Andy Ruiz is probably decent. He's a. I, I, it's hard to say. The jury's still kind of out as he moves up in his career. A win over Dimitrenko, uh, you know, that the veteran-style heavyweight mm-hmm. that'll prove something, but... Yeah. How does Andy Ruiz, without a big name, without a big push, get himself into the picture? He'll always just be doing the same thing that I was discussing with Sergey. Sergey, he'll be coming in as the B side, and yeah. he's going to have to kind of earn his way the hard way. Uh, but I think Dimitrenko's well old enough. You know, he looked, he was doing okay in that fight with Bryant Jennings, and then Jennings sparked him really surprisingly. By the way, that was crazy that two hundred and four pound Bryant Jennings knocked him out. Um, but Dimitrenko, I think, uh, is that kind of right opponent to give a good litmus test for Ruiz. But I'm not a huge fan of him in long term of where will he go. I don't think Ruiz can beat the top three. You know what I mean? Like a Fury, Wilder, or a Joshua. I think all three of them can beat him. Mm-hmm. So who knows, though? Let's see where he can go. But I'm going to take Ruiz by a decision in this bout. And then in the main event, uh, Danny Garcia, this is a good bounce back fight for him after the yeah. loss to Spence. Adrian Granados is a good, tough opponent that will be in their B game. Um, and I expect Garcia to win by unanimous decision that fight. And then he can kind of get himself back in the picture as well. Um, April 20th. DAZN, so another, so so the 13th, you have three cards on three different networks, and on April 20th, you have three different cards on three different networks, so plenty of plenty of content this month. Um, there's going to be two heavyweight bouts uh, in the main card on that DAZN card. Uh, opening up will be Derek, T- Derek Chisora uh, versus Sanad Gashi. Derek Chisora, fine. He's, what, 477 years old, and he's yeah. still making a name, trying to get himself back in the mix. It won't matter, but he's on this card, and it's fine. So I got Chisora by a mid-rounds TKO. In the main event, Dave Allen versus Lucas Brown. Um, did Lucas Brown turn pro when he was 40? Because Yeah, it <laughs> seems like <this laughs> What guy. the hell? And also, he's not only turned pro when he's been 40, he's been 43 for a decade. Right. He is the <laughs> He has the weirdest age arc of any person ever. It is, he's got the, the the big scary tattoos, and he's this hulking bodybuilder looking heavyweight, and that's fine. Um, but again, if he gets to the top three, he gets decapitated because he can't box for shit. What? <laughs> but I'll I'll take Lucas Brown by TKO. Half the time, listen, I know I pick every bout that's on TV, but half the time I enjoy these because these are like freebies for me. Like yeah. it oh, ke- yeah. keeps that percentage rate higher. So if I start charging people for betting <laughs> betting advice, my stats look better. <laughs> Uh, April 26th on DAZN. Did I pump DAZN enough yet? B- buy DAZN, man. 10 bucks a month. Do it. No, so worth pumping it. Pumping himself with all, the shit, uh, with all the fights. And also, there are actually people were bitching about the new structuring, but the, actually, if you, pay, if you pay the yearly rate, it's, it's going to go down. Yeah. Uh, $2 a month, I think. It's okay. going to end up dropping. Because they're going to do like a... I think what they're doing is they're sick of people buying on for a month to get a pay per view and sure. then canceling. Yeah. So now if you buy on for a month, it's twenty bucks. But if you do the year, it's ninety nine ninety nine. So over over time, if you're already going to be a subscriber, which I am, so I don't care. Me to well. me, it's yeah. great. Like I'm saving money now. Okay, but yeah. they're trying to kind of limit how many people just cherry pick one month to pick off a pay per view. So if you're going to do that, it's going to cost you nine, you know, ten bucks more a month. Anyway. Uh, April 26th to the Zone Network. Um, that is Sri Scott Sorungvisai versus Juan Francisco Estrada. I practiced that name. I don't know how to. I know what to say. I think I'm fucking around. Um, <laughs> I'm swearing more in this episode than usual. Uh, that card's going to open with Jesse Vargas and Humberto Soto. That's a junior middleweight bout. I'll take Jesse Vargas by UD. Jesse Vargas is good. He's kind of boring, but he's a good fighter. I like Jesse Vargas. Uh, title bout with Danny Roman and TJ Doheny. That's a 12-round WBA IBF junior featherweight bout. Uh, unification title there. I got. Uh, I actually got Doheny to beat Danny Roman by UD. And then the main event, Rune Vasai versus Juan Vers- uh, Francisco Estrada. This is a rematch. It's a fantastic first fight. I'm expecting the exact same level of high-powered, high-volume craziness yeah. of that first bout. A little bit of a dispute uh, with that first decision. I expect a wider one this time. I think Ring Vasai is going to make the right adjustments and come out a little bit better in this fight than it did in the first one. So kind of eliminate any sort of the questions as to whether or not that those cards were accurate. I'll take Ring Vasai by a unanimous decision. April 27th on ESPN Plus from London, Daniel Dubois. Uh, Daniel Dubois might be kind of a future name. Uh, he's moving himself through the heavyweight division. I'm not 100% sure. It's always hard when these guys have 8, 9, 10 fights, and they have a big promoter because you know they're being picked You know they're being picked with the right opponents. So judging power is very difficult. Like, Does he really hit hard, or is he right. just hitting people who can't take a punch and are there to lose? Sure. 
But Du Bois looks, he plays the role of the person who I think has the right thing to get him there from, what, from, from, from the eye test I can do, I guess. Um, so I'll take him by a mid-rounds t- TKO. On that same night on DAZN Network, you got uh, two title fights, uh, Zolani Titi versus Nonino Donaire. That's a WBO, WBA Bantamweight unification bout. That's the uh, World Boxing Super Series semifinals for the Bantamweights. Um, you know, in his last four bouts, uh, Donaire lost to Jesse Magdalano. He lost to Carl Frampton. And in the fight where Ryan Burnett had to lo- leave with the back injury, he was down on two of the three cards. Donaire's days are well behind him. Yeah, they're gone. His best days, I should say. His days are not well behind him. Donaire's still alive. I mean, it's not like he was dead. No, he's alive. Yeah, Donaire's days are behind him. No, no, his best days. Watch the words you say. <laughs> <laughs> Makes things seem weird. His We're being box. very lighthearted about a dead Donaire. That felt weird. Anyway... So I don't think he can pull this one off. I, I think uh, Zolani TT can win this fight. I'll take him by unanimous decision. And in the main event, uh, you got Kiro Relik versus Regis Progress. 12-round bout for uh, Relik's WBA junior welterweight title. This is also the WB or the World Boxing, I almost said WBC, the World Boxing Super Series semifinals. Dude, Regis Progress is way too good to not be known by casual fans. He's really kind of a boxing fans fighter for right now. Yeah. He's still sort of unknown, but good lord, this guy is good, and he's fun to watch, and he's exciting, and he's one of those rare dudes that is saying constantly, bring me anyone, bring me a body, put it in front of me, I will knock it out, and I then give me another something. one. What's that? I just want to hit something. Right, right. He's not scared of anybody in the division. He wants everything as soon as he can get it, and that kind of hunger and that kind of drive without – the calculation of a well manicured career is yeah. so refreshing for a guy who can yeah. actually punch and actually do what he says he's going to want to do. Um, I don't think he's going to have much trouble in this bout. I'll take progress by late rounds TKO. And last card of the month on the national schedule, April 27th, uh, showtime. That's, oh my God, I just realized that's another three card. So 13th, 20th, and 27th have three separate. Broadcast. Boxing's dead, Ray. Boxing's so dead. I can't. Brad, this this is probably our last podcast. And we're done. Why do you do a podcast for a dead sport? Who cares? I know. I don't Nobody understand. Nobody listens. Right. Nobody cares. So thanks to the three people that now know Nudo Donaire is still alive. Um, and that I was a terrible thanks, amateur mom. fighter. Right. Don't yeah, they, yeah. My mom doesn't even listen. Uh <laughs> She told me, she goes, I don't, Ray, box, boxing's dead. Why am I tuning in the show? <laughs> My own mother. Uh, sorry. Uh, April, 20, uh, April 27th in Vegas, the third, the third card of that night is uh, the Showtime card. That is going to be headlined by Robert Easter Jr. versus Rancis Bartholomew. Opening that card, Effie Ajaba. Have I talked about Effie Ajaba enough? Heavyweight, I love him. I think he's actually the fighter who has, in the heavyweight division, who has the most prospect power coming up. He is so scary. He's a, a very good technical fighter as well. I mean, not technical to, like, the very technical sense, but he can fight, yeah. and he can punch, and he can box. I don't see a ton of holes in him yet. Um, He's fighting M- M- Michael Wallace. That's a 10-round heavyweight bout. Like I said, I've been pumping him forever. I think he's fantastic. Uh, Wallace is 19-1 with 12 KOs. This is the first real good, solid opponent so far for him. I'd like to see what he does with him. I think he'll get him by late rounds TKO. Um, second on that, uh, that card is Victor Postal versus Mohamed Mimino. That's 12-round WBC junior welterweight eliminator. I'm not super big on Victor Postal. He's fine, I guess. Um, but with the, uh, his opponents making his U.S. debut, and you know how I feel about that. If you fought in only your home country for yeah. your whole career and you come over here, oh, odds boy. aren't good. Not looking Not good for all. you. No. So I, I'll take Postal by UD because he can't punch his way out of a paper bag. Uh, and in the main event, uh, he's sort of a local fighter. We, we abra- embrace him even though he's from Ohio. And we hate Ohio here in Michigan. But Robert Easter Jr. Has, did a lot of amateur boxing up here. A lot of our guys have gone down there and yep. trained in their camp. So even though he's the Toledo, Ohio fighter, we see sort of... You know, because we consider Toledo to be Detroit's like parking lot anyway. That's like our extra city. We should have had it the whole UP battle thing, right? Yeah. Shout out to right. Glass City Boxing Club. Yeah, uh, for sure. In Toledo, Ohio, and and you know, many many champions, both amateur and professional, out of that gym. Um, Chad Jaguillard, former trainer of ours, mm-hmm. Ray, who, for sure. who now handles um, the O'Quinn brothers, and um, yeah, that's that that gym's always been close to us. Never fought in our. I think they are in our Golden Gloves now. No yeah. Monroe. Well, Probably. the thing is, Monroe now goes there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's southeastern Michigan that's includes up okay. to Monroe. So all of Monroe, south of that Milan, all of that, they actually fight in the Toledo Golden Gloves. Oh wow! Okay. So they do have plenty of Michigan fighters that oh, cross yeah. over into yeah. their. You know, their backyard. And there's plenty of pros that go down there for sparring. Oh, and yeah. so we've always uh, adopted Robert Easter as a, one of our own, as our, yeah. even though he's not from Michigan, he's basically ours. We like him. He's, we support him. I went down there when he fought um, on that card with, um, oh my God, I'm blanking. He wasn't, uh, Gary Russell was on, no, not, not Gary Russell. Um, 
Was Shea, Shea Warren? Was Shea Warren was on that undercard? Okay, sure. uh, yeah. I went down there for that fight. So um, I think he can beat Bartholomew. I really, really, really want Eastern to get into the mix with like a Mikey Garcia. This win will be it, though. He can beat Bartholomew if he if he wins this bout. Now his name's there. He's got the title still to to, to force himself into a big fight. I want Robert Easter to get as many big bouts as he can get himself yeah. into. He's gone the hardest road you can possibly go to get there, and I want him to earn all get all the things he's earned out of this out of this career so far. Yeah. So get him past Rancis Bartholomew. A loss for him, and this one would be real devastating for career arc. But I think he can beat him. I I feel like almost I know I can beat him. I'm picking him to beat him. Uh, I'm going to take Robert Easter by a UD in this one. Um, but let's get him in that then that high-level, lightweight mix. Get him in there with a Mikey Garcia again. You know, he lost the yep. first one. I think he could beat him the second time. So let's get him back in the mix. Get him either a rematch with Mikey. You know, who knows? But let's get him in a, into a top, big-paying fight. Keep that belt around his waist so people have to fight him. Because a guy like him would be, if he loses that belt, good luck. Because yep. he's be too much of a threat. If you don't have, if he doesn't have a title, you want to go get. Why are you going to deal with him? You don't want that trouble for the free, for free, <laughs> for you, for you to give up your belt to him and not get anything out of out of his bout. Unfortunately, his name isn't big enough to get you a lot of money out of it either. So, every anything to keep a belt around his waist is what's going to be perfect for him because I can't see him losing the belt and then getting right back in to a big title shot. He'll have to take two or three fights and kind of work back in. I don't want that for him. I want him to win this bout, get himself a huge marquee. Maybe you know, even with a Garcia, if you rematch Garcia, maybe you can make that a pay per view this time. Maybe. Coming off him having the pay per view with Errol Spence, yeah, you know, maybe Garcia. I mean, I know that was a pay per view because of both of them, but maybe mm-hmm. Garcia can make that a pay per view the second time, right? So, who knows? So, either way, I'm gonna definitely put my uh, my, my uh, vote behind Robert Easter on that one. Uh, let's see how those picks work out for next month. So, Brad, local, you know what. I'm Moving really to you. Int- We're done I'm with really national. interested to talk about Clarissa Shields. Uh, there's not a lot going on this month in local boxing, um, either amateur or professional. No professional shows. There are some things being lined up for next month in June, and we will talk about those accordingly during those times. Um, however, on the amateur side, there's just a few items to talk about. Uh, next week on the 11th, Thursday the 11th, uh, Casa de Boxio Fight Night at Club Venetian. Um, this is a good card for amateur boxing. It's kind of a black tie event. I actually fought on this card and Did you? lost to yeah. Willie Price a while ago. That's not a bad loss. I, it wasn't Willie a bad Price loss. Willie Price is a good fighter. I, I really want that rematch, Willie. So, uh, do, you know, step up, sign the contract or whatever. Do we sign contracts in amateur? No, uh, we don't. N- not if you're doing it old. legally, you don't. <laughs> oh, no, sure, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that that's a, that was a that was a great venue actually. I remember I remember fighting there. So Club Venetian, if you want to come out sure. for that, uh, 2009 Metro Detroit Golden Gloves Championships are next weekend, April 12th through the 14th, and we will be there on the 14th for the finals uh, for sure. And yep. that's going to be at Burt's Warehouse at 2739 Russell Street in Detroit. We covered the entire tournament last year, and it was amazing. It yeah. was the largest attendance that the Golden Gloves has had in probably about the last 20 years or so. So we're excited to get back out there and see you know the 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 future world of boxing local boxing champions there and then uh, clinton county boxing club is hosting the punch out at the post event it's at the vfw post 4113 in st john's michigan and that's on april 27th 2019 uh, and that's about it uh, locally there's not much going on so I, I would love to transition and let's talk about clarissa because that's exciting real quick thought though on golden gloves yes agree or disagree i think it's been so beneficial that they took it out. I mean, I know they did it because of force, because the place closed. Sure. But I think it's so much better to have it in the city than to oh, have oh, it at absolutely. the uh, Gibraltar oh, Trade oh Center. Oh, my God, 100%. And right. you know what? I'll tell you this. They, they're, they've already um, super, they can't fit people in the building anymore right. at Burt's Warehouse. They're, they should be, if they're not already looking for they should be looking for a bigger venue. Yeah. Because last year sold out. It was standing room only. It right. was absolutely nuts, and every single bout was just sparks. Yeah, it made, and it never made any sense when 70% of your participants come from the city to host yeah, the tournament in, like, right. deep down river. Yep. That made absolutely no sense to me. I think it's done very, very well. Like I said, they did it by fours because Gibraltar Trade Center is hats, no longer. Hats off to but, the people who run the local Golden Gloves, and sure. Stewart, Chad Jaguilar, uh, Brad Snyder, and them for, for making that transition because it's been, it's been amazing ever since. Yeah, agreed. So, Clarissa Shields, Christina Hammer, April 13th. We're going to pass it over to Pete to start us off. 
Pete, again from the Whip and Nene show, joining us in today for a special edition with this big fight coming up for uh, for the local fight, uh, Clarissa Shields. Uh, as I said before, Pete and I met each other covering that fight uh, at least twice. So, Pete, I'll pass it to you. What are your What are your thoughts on this bout? Well, first of all, I really appreciate you guys bringing me in. Thanks very much. Seriously, it's great to be here. Awesome. Uh, I appreciate this you. so much. It's so much fun to talk about uh, another dead sport. You know, I talk about the dead sport of <laughs> the dead sport of horse racing on a weekly basis, and now I can talk about the it's it's like you know the Sanskrit of sports. Sure, boxing. sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's it's just amazing how this go. Or is, but you know what? I'm so excited to see you know the 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 to see young talent like Clarissa Shields really, you know, sort of stepping up to the plate and willing to take that torch. I mean, I, I, I probably wouldn't want to, uh, I mean, you know, women's boxing is not the biggest thing. I mean, she's accepting the torch of I'm going to be the next greatest thing and running with it. I mean, hardcore, that, I think that's really hard to do, sure, especially yeah. when there's so many people looking down on the sport. Uh, we have all, you know, all three of us, I assume, have been to see Clarissa Shields fight yes, or absolutely. and seen like undercard fights and yep. other women fight. Um, I, 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 for the women that may or may not be listening, I, 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 I respect the sport and I like going to see it and they are, they're tremendous athletes. So I'm trying to say this the right way. You can tell a difference in style between the women's fighting and the men's fighting. Yep. Sure. I guess that's the best way I can, I, I can say it. I mean, I, I think that men that are inexperienced with watching women's fighting think it's just two women flailing at each other as you would, you know, uh, if we were sitting around, let's use the, the, the famous term that's been coming around the last three years, locker room talk. If we were using the locker room talk, be like, you know, girls sort of flailing at each other and like, you know, oh, get away, get away, sure. you know, that sort of stuff. That's not, that's not what we see. Uh, I, I think that these women are out to prove a point. I think that, you know, Layla Ali was out to prove a point yep. when she yeah, was coming absolutely. up. So they punch a little bit harder than you would think. They try, you know, a little bit harder than you think. And you're, I was waiting for, uh, you know, Hannah Gabriels and Clarissa Shields. I was waiting for one of them to pass out because they were trying so hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that was the thing. I mean, when I say, you know, pass out, not that one of them was going to knock each other out. I was just waiting because they were just sweating and they were just, they looked like Reggie Jackson, Holly you know, Jackson. for, for the yep. Pistons. You know, he always looks like he just came out of the shower after <laughs> right. the game is over. <laughs> right. And that's what those two girls look. They they box themselves to the, the, the nub. Sure. I mean, they wore each other down. And, and that's the great thing about the women's boxing is that you get to see these women wear each other down. But so I think that Christine, you know, or Cl Clarissa Shields, just to start with her. Man, is she a bulldog. Yeah. I mean, two-time yeah. Olympic gold medal, and she's a street fighter. I mean, yeah. hard, as you could tell from, from her style, I mean, uh, to give um, maybe some of the other non-hardcore boxing fans uh, you know, a little bit of a reference, she is like a Rocky. I mean, it's like head first. Uh, you know, we're going in head first, and we're going to start, you know, punching. She she's obviously being at five foot nine. She's a jabber, mm -hmm. which is kind of odd for a short yeah. fighter. I would think figure that a short fighter would start, you know, I mean, obviously jabbing's part of boxing, but you know what I mean. I, I sure. it's kind of interesting how she relies on actually trying to keep people away from her with her jab. But that's going to be interesting with a two inch uh, differential when she's sure. going against the yeah. you know the mountain of Christina Hammer. At, you know, she's taller than I'm five foot eleven, so I'm she's taller than me. Right, right. I, it's sure. like you know, it, it's like it's crazy to see those two in person. But uh, but there's different styles that we're going to see, and I don't know what you guys uh, think about the styles, but I mean, I, I see a a stand up defense fighter in Christina Hammer, and I see an offensive bulldog in Clarissa Shields, and something has to give. I uh, I'll tell you what I, I the interesting interesting little fact of history here I was at Clarissa Shields very first amateur fight I believe she was 12 years old and then I, I got to see her again uh, as she progressed through her professional career live and I'll say this she the tenacity that that she brings to the ring and the confidence has not changed she had it when she was 12 and she still has it now um, styles make fights. And and I see Clarissa as having a style that is one of she can box on the outside, even even giving up to your point the uh, the the height differential. She can still box on the outside because she moves her head and she's effective and she uses defense. At the same time, she can let her hands go on the inside. However, this this fight and, and I'm going to admit this this fight scares me for Clarissa Shields. It, it, it scares me in more more than one way. Um, I feel like Hammer. If there is anybody to beat Clarissa right now, it it, it is Christina Hammer. And in and in recent you know pictures that have been leaked and in, in press releases and media are, are showing that Hammer is just absolutely ripped. 
And we know that Hammer is a uh, boxing technician. That's what she is. Is she really a power puncher? I don't think she's really a power puncher. She has, you know, a number of knockouts on her record. Uh, a couple more, a couple few more than Clarissa, but that doesn't make her a devastating power puncher. But she is in shape, and she is crafty, and she is coming to hit. And so um, my my take on this is it it could really this fight is a pick 'em to me. It could go either way. You know, Clarissa has moved her camp to Florida. She's with uh, John David Jackson, I believe. Who yeah, was training? So. Yes. yeah, I think so. Yeah. She's with Don J- John David Jackson. And I like what I've seen out of her uh, with that transition. I like that change, actually. I thought that was good for her. So, um, But this is a dangerous fight. And, Ray, how do, you, how do you feel about this? I mean, this is the fight that we've been waiting for for, sure. for a while, for a year and a half or so, at least, you know, since they've been talking about it. I, I'm, I'm afraid for Clarissa in this fight. I, I hope she pulls it off. But this is an uphill battle. That's yeah. my perspective. I'm actually a little less concerned. Really? Um, Interesting. I think it's so the job of Clarissa is to walk Christina Hammer down. Sure. To work the angles and let the aggressiveness and the high volume, because she's a huge volume puncher. Right. And to get her that way. Christina's job is to stay on her jab, kind of almost fight off her back foot. Matador, right? And ke- yeah, and keep the yeah. distance. I think it's much harder for Christina to keep Clarissa off than it is for Clarissa to break through. That's hard to say, though. See, you know what I mean? I, I, yes, I do. But I, I was always a fighter myself that would that would fight off the back foot because I was naturally taller, uh, six foot two hundred. I fought at between one hundred thirty to one hundred forty one. I was pounds. a freak at that weight class. You know, so stupid. So I, I was. He's a, that tall. <laughs> I was. A, I was a lightweight that often had to fight off my back foot. And I'll tell you, it's a lot. It's to me, just to me, it's a lot easier when you can make somebody miss. You know what I mean? Sure. And if Christina Hammer can can fight off the back foot effectively and make uh, a, an overly aggressive, that's the key word here, an overly aggressive and an anxious Clarissa Shields, if she can make her miss, then eventually over the fight during, she, she's going to make her pay. But that's that's to say that Clarissa comes in over anxious, feeling like she has to break her down and knock her out in the beginning rounds of the fight. And I don't think Clarissa has to do that. I do I do think Clarissa has that jab where she can box her way to a victory, getting sure. inside to a victory. But there's something about this fight that, that makes me believe that Clarissa is not going to be so calm. Yeah. And she's going to be anxious. Well, there's a lot of fire. There's a lot they of hate fire each over this. They do. Did yeah. you see uh, the promo video on Showtime that um, Hammer has a fuck shields mouth, yes. mouth guard? Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, there's, there's real life. There's real life hate. There's like this is there. not this is not brewed up for promotional. And and I don't think sake. I don't think Hammer can be just blasted out. I, I don't think it's going to happen. Clarissa only has, if I'm not mistaken, two knockouts. She can she can crack. Don't get me wrong, but the record speaks for itself. You know, um, the knockout ratio. I, I don't think that that she can blast Hammer out of there. And I do think Hammer's coming. She's coming for. She's prepping for this. She's coming for a 15 round boxing match sure she's not training for a 10 round uh, ten, you know two minute round fight she is training the marathon sure that's my opinion i do i'm scared for, i'm scared of this fight for clarissa but we'll see what happens i wish it was a 12 round three minute bout because I love it. if it clarissa be- was gonna wear her down that's how it would happen that extra half hour <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? like, you, it's not a half hour my math is terrible but that, that extra time that's you know what i mean like that's a lot of extra wearing out time i would say this though because I, I will tell you what I think the, the, the arc is. I think Shields come out, comes out hot early. And I think for, yeah. a, for a few rounds in the middle, I think, gonna ha- I think Hammer's going to stabilize. And yeah. she's going to have it maintained. I believe that Hammer has the ability to keep, Christi- to keep Clarissa away. Yes. I don't think she's ever had to, though. Right. So can she... Not well. Will she? Not can she? Is where my 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 question that I've asked myself is. Yes, she can, but will she? Right. Because she's never been forced to, and her right. level of opposition up until Christina Hammer has been eh. So that's, she's never seen. Or, I keep saying Christina Hammer, and I'm saying Clarissa. You know what I mean? Clarissa, yeah. yeah. She's never seen anyone like Clarissa, and I think seeing something new for the first time can be a problem. Yes. So it could be jarring. Absolutely. I think I it's agree. Shields takes the first few, uh, just out of pure. I'm coming out the gate. Yeah. Heavy. I think. Hammer's going to stabilize in the middle. I actually going to think. I think Shield stops her late. I think I, she I gets think overwhelms it, that, 
and then takes her down. So I that's dis- official I prediction. Shields oh, TKO. Lane. I disagree. Okay. I, I think go on the record. I'm going on the record okay. right now saying this fight. This fight's in America. Pete agree or disagree? This fights. This fights in America, Atlantic City. Okay. I, I'm going to think that. Wait, hold on. How could Pete disagree with? No, that? no, no. I'm oh. of, the next, of the next statement. <laughs> oh, I got you. I agree with it's in Atlantic City. I'm Atlantic sorry. City is very much in America. Do you, do you agree that it's in Atlantic City? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's oh, sorry. Atlantic okay. City's been no, going. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree or disagree. I think. Sorry, I think I'm just being a jerk. Uh, no, that's are you. That's okay. Um, are you good? Are you going to turn purple over there? Right. I had too much coffee. I love it. I, I told you had I had any. too much coffee. I know. I know. So that being said, Sorry. it's on. It's on U.S. soil. Uh, Christine. Yeah. Christina Hammer for that. That right there is coming in as the underdog to me. So if she starts turning the tables on uh, Clarissa Shields, then I, I could see this actually being a draw. And, I, and that's my prediction. I think that this fight is going to be a draw. I think that Clarissa is going to come out in her pit bull style. And I think I just something about this, this fight is telling me that Hammer is not coming to play with her. And she's going to handle her. And she might even, she, it, this could be one of those bouts where it's, it's hey, you know, uh, Christina Hammer really won it. They gave her a draw. Let's set it up and do it again. And yeah. there's money to be made here. I mean, and this, this draws another question. That's to agree to disagree. So um, do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that, Pete? Because it's leading into something else. And that something else is, and I'm sorry for the two-part question, is if Clarissa gets past Christina Hammer in this fight, what is left and where does she go now? Nothing. Sorry. Well, not that's, P- that's, P- that's, 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 that's the greatest question I think that you can – that let me obviously I'm going to need a, a breather for that second part of the question because that's that's the million dollar question yeah. I think, but to answer your first question I mean the fight being here I, I I think you guys are right I think you're right about Christina Hammers coming here to fight I mean this is going to be a marathon I wish it was a twelve rounder rather than a ten rounder because I yeah. think taking the two rounds away from Clarissa that's her her game plan is to go along and tire out the yes. the freaking statue that's going to be in front yeah. of her. Deep you, waters. Yeah, and, and and to your point about you know uh, Hammer being ripped, she has to be ripped because the game plan for Shields is going to be body, body, body. Yeah. And you know what? Honestly, if 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 you know, I'm not a technical fighter. Even you guys have are, have been in the ring, and this is coming from uh, you know an observation. I think this fight's going to come down to footwork. Interesting. It, it, yeah, as, sure. as, as, as because it, it's about who's going to be off balance. And unfortunately, to your point why this fight scares you, Clarissa Shields is the bulldog. Yeah. So if there's anybody who's going to be off balance first and hit the canvas first for an eight standing eight count, it's going to be Clarissa because she's going to be on the charge yeah. while you know the statue is standing there playing her defensive you know, pot shots, waiting for Clarissa to start sweating you know, bullets so she can attack the eyes. Because that's where Hammer's going to go and try to, you know, blind her in one eye and shut her down. That's the only way you can shut down the bulldog is to go after the eyes and shut her down. Yeah. So I, I really think footwork is going to be the key to this fight. But to your point, I think it will be a draw. And if it comes down to a judge's decision, that does not help Clarissa. It just doesn't help her. I don't see them giving uh, it, draws are good. I, I, if you can get a, a a distinct tie and call it, you know, we've had a great fight. That's it. Sure. I think the chances of that, if we go down to judges, drop to like twenty percent. I really think someone's going to get a decision here. Really? I really do, and that's okay. the tough part. And I hope we don't have that because I agree with you. I think that I think that twenty four and zero Christina is going to get the decision because of playing the the, the style of fighting that she's going to have defending against the, the style of fighting Clarissa has. That's why Clarissa's going to have to stay on her feet. She got up against Hannah Gabriel's when yeah. Hannah Gabriel's yeah. knocked her down, but she knocked her down because Clarissa was off balance, yeah. not because Clarissa sure. was tired, but Clarissa was off balance. So it comes down to footwork for me. But where does she go? Can she bulk up? I mean, the the How problem is, is like does she have you can't go, go south well, enough for like a Katie Taylor right. or a Michaela right. Mayer, and, and you got to go real fights, north to get right. Cecilia Brockhouse. And, the, and those are the fights. So, right. so. Yeah. I was gonna say Cecilia. That's yeah. what I was saying. Can she bulk up for that's, Cecilia? That's a weight class or two. And up, Cecilia so. is undisputed sure, too, right? Sure. And, and it's like, oh my gosh, I, 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 if Shields wants to be the greatest of all time and have, and, and you know, they get that that Rocky style belt with this, that special yeah. undisputed you know belt. So if she wants all five belts, if you will, sure. Um, yeah. It's it's basically going to be like she'll turn into, um, uh, I'm, now I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Forty and zero, fifty and zero. Why am I drawing a blank? Floyd, she'll Floyd, turn yeah, to Floyd, yeah. Floyd Mayweather sure. and just be like, you know, hey, I'll. 
take on anybody who wants sure. who wants to, who wants a shot at the title. Right, you know right. Who wants a shot at the title? Sure, sure. So I think that she's going to do that and start collecting money. Yeah. If yeah, she hopefully. wins. Yeah. I mean, well, what's your what's your prediction? We're all on the record. Oh boy. I got clear. Clarissa late round TKO. Brad. No, you. Know, it's it's going to be a draw. This fight. Okay. Gonna be a draw. draw. Pete. Well. With Dimitri Ham- Salida, Dimitri Salida would kill me. Uh, <laughs> so I, I am going to take the home girl, Clarissa, okay. just because of the bulldog. All right, uh, but I'm worried about the footwork. All right. Well, that is our uh, April edition. We're going to wrap it up here. I am so happy, Pete. Thank you again for coming on. Thanks, Check Pete. out the Whip and really podcast. It, guys. Pete, throw thank a Twitter you. handle out there. Yeah, uh, uh, son of USFL dad on Twitter. Perfect. Brad Killer B three one three. And me, aka Oliver Twist, because I used to be homeless. See how I just dump a bucket of ice water I'm, into the show? I'm depressed now. I'm yeah. really Hey, depressed. next next episode we discuss when I was homeless. I'm going to pass over to Roger. Roger's going to close it up for us. All right. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, you left me with cold water. That's what Brad, put, Brad put it uh, You like nicely. that transition, Roger? Oh, like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, on that on that transition, uh vote for the final four here, uh the Trudy Daniels versus Heather Park, and I don't want to say versus, but uh thank you for everybody who's voted and participated on the website. And then the other bracket is Allison Martinick and Kimberly Gill. Allison Martinick is on Jay Towers. Kimberly Gill, of course, on Local 4, Heather Park, 971, and Trudy Daniels on Wheels and the Drew and Mike podcast. So vote for that. Also, look for SRE Ringside podcast to kind of have its own separate iTunes feed, and we're going to be uh, launching that next month. So look for exclusive content from Brad and Ray. And uh, as fights get up more and more as springtime, summertime kicks in, look for some exclusive content. So... They'll be easier to find. Uh, there's, like I said, the Golden Glove stuff last year was great. We had a lot of uh, traffic from that. So we appreciate everybody tuning in. And until next time, ding, ding. <laughs>